Good evening, or good morning, depending on when you're watching this video, I guess. Welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Dave out on a big walk. This week sees me in the village of Ashford in the Water to do walk number nine from the Collins Rambler's Guide to the Peak District, the new edition. They've just gone past a whole load of waterfalls. There is a road up to the left, we're gonna follow this track down. And through this style. And this walk's called Magpie Mine. I'm actually setting out on this walk really quite late. It's probably about 20 past six at the minute. And this walk's supposed to be a three hour walk, so we could be looking at finishing at nine o'clock in the dark. But I've not got any cooking to do on the walk but there is a cook that will be on this video because I'm actually camping for the night. I've already been out, which is why I'm a, bit, a little bit late. I've already got my tent set up at the campsite that I'm staying at near Money Ash, the Lathkildale campsite. So I've already got the tent set up. You may have already seen the tent because it may well be that the tent that I'm sleeping in tonight, you'll have already seen the review that I've done of it. If you've seen that review, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it yet, well, I hope you do enjoy it. And hopefully I'll, I'll have had a comfy night's sleep in it. I don't know that bit yet, but we'll see. The weather's been pretty horrendous today already. Loads of massive showers, but I'm kind of hoping that the showers have done their worst. I'm prepared just in case I've got my waterproofs, so we should be good. A tent all set up at the camp and today I'm going to be cooking a fantastic dish. I was talking to my brother yesterday and he absolutely agrees with me. This is one of the best dishes that we remember growing up. Um, a proper dream meal. It's my mum's surprise stew and dumplings. We'll see the surprise in a bit. Um, and I'll be doing all the cooking at camp. So to, to begin with, we're just gonna take in and enjoy the walk, not even thinking about finding stops to cook. Apologies for the shaky camera, everybody. The pathway's not pretty stable at the minute. Um, and then when I get back to camp, get to my tent, start cooking, because I'm definitely gonna be hungry. I'll also need to set up sleeping pad, sleeping bag, all of that sort of stuff. And yeah, took myself in for an early night. But look at this river. It's so wide. This is uh, Ashford Bobbin Mills. Still got its water wheels visible. And um, this mill, it's quite cool. And this mill used to make bobbins from local ash woods for the cotton mills that were local. They're pretty cool. Thinking while I'm walking through this bit, it's probably a good idea to tell you a bit more about this walk. So the Magpie Mine Walk, it's a seven miler. Level, level of difficulty is a three. So I should expect it to be a little bit challenging. There's a, there's a dam. Well, I need to keep going that way, so. 
I'm going to head down here and back up again. It's my own fault. When I got to the mill buildings, as I approached the mill buildings, there was a path round, just the, like straight on, but to the right of the mill buildings, you'll see me walk past. But actually there was a route just round the back of it to the left. That's the one you need. Not a problem. But yeah, this is a seven mile walk, level three difficulty. And we haven't get yet got to the most spectacular part yet. The magpie mine itself. We'll see that later on. So this is the uh, the altitude map. Also shows me how long it reckons it's going to take. I reckon I'm probably somewhere around about we're on the bottom of the map. It says three kilometres. I've done two miles. I've just been walking uphill non-stop. It's been pretty hard work. I can see though that I've got a level bit that takes me across D. Or well, not level, but it's going up. And then a really sharp peak up to E. Up to my view of the village of Sheldon, so whew, I'm out of breath already. I've only done about 40 minutes, a lot more to go yet, and a lot of uphill by the look of it. However, a lovely, lovely walk through the woods. Hopefully we're not climbing up there. Looks pretty steep. That is a that is a direct route up there to the village of Sheldon. But we instead are going to be heading to White Lodge, Deepdale, down this way. Quite a few different paths here. Even I think I might end up getting the wrong one, but let's have a look at this sign. I'm not going back towards Ashford and Sheldon or to the right to White Lodge or Mon and Monsell Dale. I'm taking this one to Moniash Deepdale. So we're going straight on. It's just a dog leash or something, but it looks very, uh, very much like a noose. This way. Come on, keep up. In memory of Jeremy David Wright, a plant lover all his life. That's beautiful. I would have a sit down, because if I'm honest, I'm running out of energy. And I haven't got any food, and I'm only about three miles in at the seven, so it's going to be a challenge this one, everybody. Wish me luck, because I feel like I've got the uphill section coming up 
very soon and that's going to be super tough. It's probably difficult to tell on the camera but this whole hillside's covered in these yellow flowers. I'm sure there'll be an expert somewhere who'll tell me what those are. So, the next bit of my journey, I'm just going to go through this style, walk along the wall and then head up following the path, uh, following the wall that runs up here. So I'm going to follow that wall up and I'm going to give these lambs plenty of space. In fact, I can just make out a faint path that I need to follow. It's not actually where the wall is. You can just see where I need to follow. There we go. When you climb these uphill sections, don't forget to turn around. Whew. Sun's trying to poke through there. Now there's no path here. So, coming over the stile, don't turn left or right, just straight on. As time goes on, the path will develop here. You can just about kind of see one, but there will be. Give it the summer. Just thinking, I'm glad I gave you that advice if you do this walk. And I highly recommend it, it's hard, but you'll see why it's worth it in a bit. But I seem to remember doing this with Mrs. Bushcraft Dave. And I'm going to say it could easily be three or four years ago. And I have a feeling that instruction that I've just given you there to go straight ahead is crucial because I seem to remember me and Mrs. Bushcraft Dave ending up like in the fields down there and there was no styles and footpaths and things like that so yeah straight over that style Just go ahead be confident there is a gate not far ahead from that and I wonder if I hold the camera nice and steady if you can see in the distance what we're headed to well you'll certainly be a lot closer soon much closer we don't actually walk straight to it we're just getting towards a, a metre road when we hit the road turn left that'll actually take us to the village of Sheldon <sighs> right just while I'm here in the village of Sheldon it's very small um, I believe there's a pub here, whether it's still open or not, I don't know. But the last time we were here, it was raining, so we went and got a drink while it was raining before we could come back out again. So, for now, we're heading to Magpie Mine. A bit too tight for me. Hi, chickens. And I'm not coming in here. Not very pretty. I don't know. You must get sick of walkers coming through your field. Thank you. 
huge cable. Pull everything up. I'll tell you a bit about it in a minute. I'll tell you what, I'll get to I'll have a bit more of an explore. I'll get comfy somewhere. I'll tell you all about it. It's the uh, the most complete and interesting remains of a lead mine in the peak. The mine was worked on and off from 1682, over 300 years. And there are 20 mine shafts around here for the lead mining. And the big building behind me and the tower, they are the um, remains of the Cornish engine house and the Cornish chimney. Basically, from what I could read up about it, the village of Sheldon that I was at already, the village of Sheldon um, had a population boon in about 1890 something, I think it said. Let me have a look. It did say. The 1850s. Um, the population basically doubled because 14 lead miners from Cornwall moved up to the local area. Whether it be to just work here or to support the local industry, I don't know. But um, there's a lot of Cornish architecture around here, which is pretty cool. And all of these buildings around here are now a protected ancient monument. Which is cool, because it is spectacular set against this landscape. There's nothing like but flat fields and flat views all around. So this stands out really clearly on the landscape. One thing's for sure. Pretty spectacular. Anyway, it's now eight o'clock. I've been on the go for two hours. I think it's about time that I do the last three miles. About an hour. We've got to go back the way we come till we hit the village of Sheldon. It is about the halfway spot. In fact, I think it's about four and a half miles with about two and a half to go. But if you are bringing some pick up pack lunch with you for your travels. It's a good spot to, to do it, if, especially if the sun's out. We've left Magpie Mai behind and we've just gone through two styles. Now, if I was to keep on going, um, that would take me back to the village of Sheldon. But looking at the map, it actually wants me to follow this wall. So when you've come past the second style, out of Magpie Mine, turn right, heading on along another footpath. Back in the village of Sheldon, just come out the other end of it this time. So we do come back to Sheldon. When you come through that fence, we're just going down the road to the right and we'll sweep round to the left, just past that house. Stick to the lower path, just along the wall here. Into the woods and to the dell, the path is straight, I know it well. Into the woods, but who can tell who's waiting on the journey? It certainly feels like that. I haven't got loads of time, but... Fancy checking out something just up to the right here. Has been slippy. Walking all down this bit, so I'll be very careful. Cool. And now we just rejoining the path where we initially came in we came into this field and we went that way so we walked all the way along there we've just come back to it rejoined it and now heading back to the village of Ashford in the water I didn't film a lot of the back end of the journey 
my phone was pretty much out of battery I've just plugged it into my power bank just to give it a little bit of a boost for this bit not a problem when I get back to camp it can stay plugged into the power boost right the way through when I'm filming me cooking so don't forget don't tune out yet I know we've, we've done the walk and normally I'd be signing off and saying see you in the next one and all that but um, we've still got the cook to come yet and honestly you're, you're not going to want to miss it because from my point of view it's super simple and going to be utterly tasty it is about quarter to nine so it's took me two hours 45 minutes I'm back in Ashford under the in the water now there's the little bandstand where I started and I just wanted to take a moment whilst I was stood near this river to talk about the fact that this week as I record this it's mental health awareness week for you guys it'll probably have been about a month ago but as far as I'm concerned whether it's mental health awareness week it could never be more important for us to keep talking about it so the theme of this year's mental health awareness week is about reconnecting with nature I certainly hope that for you, those of you that have been watching these videos you found even just using the videos a, a useful way of connecting with nature if you're not able to go out yourselves or maybe it's inspired you to get outside. I know a few people who've messaged me and, and said that this has definitely motivated them to get outside. Uh, somebody messaged the other day to say that they'd gone out and bought the book, which is amazing. Um, so thank you um, to all of those that are subscribing. Uh, anybody who's new to the channel, there's loads more walks to come. Yeah, I'm working my way through the Peak District walks at the minute, but there's a load more sort of longer distance hikes and Obviously, I'm called, the channel's called Bushcraft Dave. I, I need to get doing some bushcraft at some point, but it's just not quite been the right time and opportunity. And obviously, I've got motivated to be doing these walks and getting fit at the minute. There will be bushcraft coming. I've got some big plans for that as well. So for now, I just wanted to say to everybody, like it's been a tough year. Um, you're not alone. Get out there, connect with nature. Sometimes when I'm doing these hikes, like there'll be moments where I doubt myself that I'm gonna even get through the hike at all. And like, that's sometimes it's silly because like it's a quite a simple walk or whatever. I guess it's a pretty good metaphor for life really, but when I'm doing the walk, when I get to those moments where things are tough and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to make it to the end of the walk, I just focus on one thing, which is putting one foot in front of the other. As long as I keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep going, We'll get out the other side of it and i do think that's a decent metaphor for life as well that when things are tough in life just keep going right just keep putting one foot in front of the other keep doing the basics getting out of the chair going getting yourself a drink making a meal putting your favorite tv program on ringing a mate all right a little challenge for everybody what i want you to do this week if you can even if it's just one person Ask them, are they okay? And like, not in that British way of going, how are you doing, you all right? And we all go, yeah, fine, yeah. I, yeah, no, nah, fine, I'm top, yeah, no problem. Like, let's, let's try and change that. Let's, if somebody says, how are you doing? Let's try and be honest, if we are all right, we're all right. But if not, just say, you know, not doing great today, but I'm, I'm working on it and maybe you'll get that person that you were talking to, maybe they'll come and chat to you, maybe that'll be what you need. And if they don't wanna talk, they don't wanna talk, move on. But I've been talking a while. Anyway, this is me, Bushcraft Dave, asking you, how are you doing? You all right? For me personally, I'm knackered and I'm hungry. It's time to get back to the car. Because there's still more of this video to go yet. Speak to you in a bit. Okay, we'll stick a pan on. And into this pan is going around about 100 grams of carrots. I had already put them in water just to keep them fresh. 
for longer. So I'd already chopped them because I didn't want to be messing about on the trail. I'm just going to bring them to the boil and cover and simmer those for about five minutes. I'll put some more water in there. Make sure that comes up to a nice boil. Which it'll do pretty quickly by the look of it. So I've put the lid on now. I have already put the simmering on. Yeah, something I realised when I was cooking before. And I end up getting loads of um, flames coming up around the outside. Is that because you've got the... Um, without the simmering on, it's it's like full white. There's, there's little holes around the outside of the stove that the flames come through. So put the simmering on right, while that's simmering away we'll get on with the next bit so I've got um, just the other saucepan and I'm going to put in there some flour some self-raising flour uh, 85 grams has ended up going in there at the minute I'm making a portion that will be good for about two people so 85 grams of self-raising flour and then half of that so 42 43 grams of suet and a little bit of salt was in there as well so that's all my dry ingredients i'm going to put in there about a couple of tablespoons of water um, and then sort of mix it and bind it all together if you want to make this this dish vegetarian you could obviously use vegetarian suet but when you see the other ingredients that are going in here i mean this really isn't a vegetarian dish i'd have to think very carefully about how i would make it so because there's a lot of beef constituents to this dish but i think it is possible i'll have um, i'm going to get my thinking cap on and figuring out what other sort of variants we could do or how i could do something that would be uh, vegetarian suitable but for now going to bring all this together so in my mum's instructions she says that you should mix it until it's a, a soft but not sticky dough I feel like I've probably gone on the verge of sticky it's not bad obviously I've only brought as much flour as I, need, I thought I needed, I didn't bring extra, which is a bit foolish, because I could have done, I've got the car today. But to be fair, it's not a bad dough. I'm gonna leave that to sit for a bit. We'll come back to what to do with that in a second. Right, the next bit is where the surprise element comes into the stew. So what I need to do is with this dough, I need to break it into four pieces, so that's half, we'll come back to that in a minute, and half again, okay, so that's a quarter of the dumpling mix. So here's the plan, with the dumpling mix, what I need to do, and I'm going to go and wash my hands once I've done this stage, is in my other tub here, I've got 100 grams of tinned corned beef that I've already cut into four pieces. So the plan with this is you push the dumpling mix out into a sticky flat piece. You get the corned beef and you wrap the dumpling around the outside, hopefully leaving no gaps. <sighs> there we go. It's took a while. Um, you'll notice that these two are absolutely massive compared to these two. What I realised was the big chunks of, of corned beef that I had were clearly just too big and I, 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 where I am at the minute I, I'm not really able to properly get on and then make these particularly pliable so I ended up just biting those chunks in half so realistically if I was to reduce the size of these maybe I could I'd probably be looking at slightly less than 100 grams however I'm really happy with them 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make use of the space that I've got while I get the next bit sorted to use a brand new gadget that I've got, which I'll show you in just a second. All right, the new gadget that I want to show you is this. It is the kettle, the kettle that goes with the Trangia 27 series. There is a kettle that also goes with the 25 series, um, but I just wanted a little individual kettle. I will show you at some point when I put all of this stuff away that this kettle fits inside everything and the, the stove itself, oh, hot chocolate sachet in there for later, um, that the stove itself will fit inside here. Um, but for now, I'm just going to pop some water in here because what I want to do is I want to quickly boil up some water because what I would love to do is make use of some of the leftover waste that comes out of the next step of my cook. So, kettle on, and we'll see what happens with that. See how long it takes to boil. All right, while that kettle's boiling, I've just drained off the carrots. I'll come to them in a second. So the next part of this recipe calls for a tin of oxtail soup. Other brands are available, and the plan is, um, I'm going to use three quarters of this tin in the dish that I'm going to make in a second, which means I've got about a quarter left over, 100 grams. So what I thought I would do is, I would just pour the 100 grams into a mug, mix it with a little bit of boiled water, so I get myself like a, a little quick oxtail broth, just to get me going whilst the rest of it cooks, and so that we've got no waste. All the rubbish will be going away with me at the end. So I wasn't really sure when this kettle would be ready because I did, there's no whistle on it or anything like a, a normal one. What's steaming up the camera, but the steam's all coming out. It's bubbling away nicely. That kettle can come off. I'll just mix a little bit into that just to make myself a nice Soupy drink. Okay, next job. The drained carrots. The drained carrots, all the oxtail soup is going in there. So that's all done. Along with some frozen peas, which I'll just quickly go and drain now. the first bit of food overboard we quickly go and drain these peas clearly that's really hot without the simmering on let's pop that simmering in still going for it a fair bit but it'd be less than it was okay uh, so peas, we've got um, that's about 50 grams or something like that, 50 grams of frozen peas. This portion size that I'm making, um, because I knew I was going to be doing a big hike, it's, it's a serves too. So what we need to do now is, move that carrot in. Simply need to place the dumplings on the top as best I can. It's not going to be perfect. Cool. And put the lid on top. We're going to simmer that away for about 15 minutes. 
I ended up putting the lid on in the end because I felt like there was just a bit too much steam coming out, as you can probably see now. So we'll get the lid off. And now the dumplings, rather than being a white colour, have sort of changed to a much more sort of pale. Yeah. I mean, I don't know enough. I'm sure my mum will watch the video and tell me I've done everything wrong and that the dumplings are not done right. But they've had about 15 minutes. They've definitely changed colour and, and, and fluffed up a bit. I'll soon find out when I eat it whether it's a bit raw in the middle. But because the meat that was inside was already a cooked meat, there's no issues there. So that is my mum's classic stew and dumplings. Let me get that into a bowl and we'll get it served up and I cannot wait to get tucked in because I am hungry. missing anything as much of the gnarly bits off the bottom as I can because it's all going to taste good okay so remember this is a two person portion I am being incredibly greedy yeah let's uh, let's tuck in all right then my phone my watch is about to battery is about to die it's 20 to 11 I am finally having my dinner. Um, because of the light, I've got shining in my eyes, so you can even vaguely see me. I can't even see, see what I'm eating at all. Mm, some ghostly, ghoulish images. Let's see what it tastes like. I have to say, that is super delicious. I mean, I love dumplings anyway. We stick the corned beef in there to warm through. It's a thing of beauty. If you don't like peas and carrots, leave them out. In fact, I was thinking you could probably get away with like a you know, a little small tin of carrots and chuck them in. But super tasty, everybody. Well, I'm going to get myself all set up for the night. I haven't even sorted out my sleeping, my sleeping bag or anything, but I'll leave you to it. It's been a wonderful day. Somehow I've managed to avoid the rain again. The lad's done well. Cameron's struggling. So it's been a good one. I doubt anything else is going to happen tonight, so see you in the morning. Well, this morning I'm knocking up some porridge. I've also got a, uh, I think I'm going to be cheeky and stick a, a sachet of hot chocolate in there. 
So I'm going to make it a chocolate porridge. So the porridge I made, it was 50 grams of porridge. I couldn't tell you exactly the amount of millilitres of um, semi-skim milk that I've used, but it's supposed to be about 350, something like that. So it's a bit strange doing my sign off to you in the morning. Really weird. Normally I sign off and that's me done for the day. Well, that's not how it is today. Let me just quickly talk you through um, what we've got coming next. Oh. So yeah, let me talk you through the next bit. And thank you for sticking with me all the way through. It's been an absolutely fantastic journey and adventure. Bit of a different one this time with the late night walk, pitch black cooking, and that was tasty. I think with hindsight, one of the things I would do other than the smaller chunks of corned beef, which definitely worked, and it might have meant that I could have made a fifth dumpling, it doesn't really matter. But I think I probably would have used a tin of like baby carrots rather than the chopped fresh carrots. Um, because I think, because they're already kind of soft, some of the carrots in there, they were, even though I cut them really thin, hadn't really sort of boiled through to that. I, I really like like a soft carrot in a stew. Stupid, isn't it? But uh, really good dish. An overnight camp. I've got porridge this morning. If you've stuck with me this far, um, just let you know next time out at my next Peak District walk, I'm doing walk number 10. And I don't think this is one I've done before. It's still pretty close to here. A lot of the walks that I'm, I do, um, so, or all the walks that we've done so far, um, have all been around this area, like with Money Ash and this campsite not far behind. Um, so the next one's called Chelmorton, Five Wells and Taddington. And it's a six miler. Um, yeah, I don't remember doing it. I have not really thought out yet what I'm going to cook on it, so I've got a long list somewhere of things to try out. I'll, we'll see what we come up with. It's not an overnight camp this time, but thank you so much for joining me. I've still not properly woke up yet. <laughs> um, I hope you have a lovely weekend, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you. I was just wandering around the campsite, looking at stuff, and I found some of these. I have been after something like this for a year, easily, when I've been walking through the woods. It's mainly because the woods are not ash trees, but these are Doldinica concentrica, the cramp ball fungus, or King Alfred's cakes. I will try and show you, the, I'll store these, and I'll try and show you about these in another video. I may have even got them a bit too soon, but hopefully you'll see them coming up soon. Seeing as I've got the book, I might as well take the opportunity and tell you a little bit about Magpie Mine. What's that? Why is it called Magpie Mine? Great question. Let's have a look. Uh, doesn't tell you.